All right, everybody, we're back from break. So now we're going to get nerdy. Dun, dun, dun. I like it. But I do want to show you one more quick thing, because um, we talked a little bit about taking the LED and having a hotspot where it's just kind of one individual light and you can see it and you're like, ugh. Well, these are a couple of examples of diffusers that I brought with today. So what they do is they take the LED. Uh, let me get an example of one. Maybe out here would be nice. Maybe. All right. And then they actually just fit over it usually. So why is that paused? Hmm. Uh, give me a minute. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> All right, but it, it, it's working out. Okay, so this is an example of one of those, and then uh, it's just called an LED diffuser. And basically, there's a spot just to kind of go over top of it. So it kind of looks like that. Boop. And what it does is it takes the light coming in, and then it basically diffuses it so it's like a bigger spot. So I had those batteries. Let me see if I can grab one of those things real quick and see if I can show you an example. Boop. Ooh, that's a horrible example because that is a very tiny <laughs> like LED. Not powerful. But basically what you do is you put it on it and then it makes it brighter or diffused and it kind of does a lot of different stuff because by itself it's kind of like that and you can have like other things. So the cool part is these could be gems, these could be glued to other things if you want to light up stuff. And this is another example of one. So this is just like a dome shape as well. So once you put it inside of it, it kind of like has a more of a dome thing instead of just a pinpoint. But, uh, but they are diffusers, in case you guys want to look for those. All right, so let's go more, yeah. How do what? Yeah, so the top of LEDs are mostly just a resin, so it's just hard plastic, um, and they glue with any kind of plastic glue. So yeah. The resin? Yeah. That was cool. If you embed them, and they're probably a part of it, which is kind of neat, but then if you do resin casting, you can actually do it inside of it, and it looks so much cooler. Yep, because you can add stuff in it to actually help diffuse it too, and. Love it. That makes me happy. All right, so the next level of lighting is gonna require controllers, okay? I know, right? So up to this point, we basically had an LED, where which is like a light source and a battery and an on-off switch, right? That's basically about it. But anything else that's gonna be cooler is gonna require you to use something in order to actually make it run or do something, right? So this is an example of a really simple one and it's just a controller that's built into plugs, okay? So all it has is an on and off and mode switch, and it can be programmed to do a lot of different stuff. But right out of the box, what it does is, first it requires a nine volt, boop. Let's see if I can actually get it to run. Boop, of course not. Why does it never wanna work for me? Oh, because it's not plugged in, maybe. Well, this is a horrible example. So what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to light up this little light and make it flash. I don't know if it's the battery or what. I did, but I just checked the voltage of it, so it should actually be working. Well, this is going to be horrible for that example, but it'll be fine for later. All right. So basically what it does is it just controls this giant LED. So what is this, right? So if you start looking at that, what it is, it's a lot of individual LEDs all put together into one single pole. So it basically takes probably, I want to say, s nine, 12, like 12, basically, little individual lights. Because so you can kind of see these little squares right here. Each one is an LED. And instead of having individual ones, we have to solder them all together, they come as this, which is just super bright and omnidirectional. So it actually goes in every single direction, which is kind of cool. Okay? So that is an example of this. And I wish I could get it to work. You know what, actually, let me try one more other thing, because I might have plugged it in backwards. Uh, wait a minute. Work for half a second. Maybe. Well, that sucks. <laughs> right. Oh, there we go. Thank God. Did I press? All right. So, 
What this is doing is each one of these little LEDs are just an orange or yellow light, okay? But what the controller is doing is it's actually doing controlling how the LEDs light up instead, right? So when we start pressing the button, which is just the mode or demo, right, we should be able to get it pulsing kind of like that. Can you kind of see that one? All right. And then the other things that it does, if I can actually get it to work, work. Why can I never get things to work? To flash. Right. Sure. So the remote controller is the same kind of principle. Um, it's just a little bit less complex because the simple controller that we used just to turn things on and off and change the colors, all it does is it controls the brightness and the speed, where this allows us to start animating the lights. That's the difference of a controller. Okay? So that's why when it pulses and things like that, that's kind of what it's doing. If I can actually get it to work, which of course it's not. I hate that. That drives me nuts. All right. <clears throat> anyway, you can kind of see it pulsing, but it does other cool stuff if I can get it to work which I'm going to skip it because it's not important. The important thing about it is the controller, right? Because the controller allows us to start animating things. Now, if you are techie, we can do an Arduino and we can write code that will actually do it for us, and I'll show you an example of that. But there are non-coding methods available too. <clears throat> so in order to actually run anything, we probably should describe what a NeoPixel or a light strip is. So I guess we'll start there. So there's two main different kinds of LED strips, and here is an example of both, right? There's usually a three and a four, okay? Now what I mean by that is these little copper pads right here, right? Each one has a different thing that it does, and this one has four copper pads, okay? Now LEDs come in different voltages. So there's a five volt and a 12 volt, which are the most common ones, okay? I think there's a 24, but you know, whatever, right? So yeah. What? Why does it never do that? I must be doing this. I must be hitting it. I don't know. Uh, I was gonna say, it's not yeah. Uh, All right, good. <clears throat> so, um, 5 volts, 12 volts, and things like that. So how can you tell? So if you look at every single LED strip, it has little things actually written onto it. All right? So it'll tell you what voltage it expects. So if it says 5 volts, it's 5 volts. 12 volts, 12 volts, and so on and so on, right? If you're going to use it with an Arduino or some kind of controlling board, then you really want to stick with the 5 volts because there's a 5 volt outage pin on every board. So it's kind of nice. So it helps it kind of uh, be able to power it, right? If you don't use 5 volts, then you have to use an external battery pack, which um, is another option, okay? Now, the three things here we can actually see are voltage, the data in. Is that going to focus or not focus? And it's kind of written on it. Can you see it or no? I can't really tell because I can't really. OK, good. Uh, of course. So the one on the one side is the voltage. Then the middle one it says data. And then the other one is ground. OK. Now, in technical terms, ground is like the negative side of things. OK. So on a battery, that's the black cord, things like that. OK. The data one is going to be the most important one because that's going to be the center channel right here. And that is going to be able to change the colors and animate it in different ways. All right. And then on the other side is the voltage in. So that is the positive side of things. So that's the red wire coming in. OK. So voltage in and out. The middle one is the data. Now, if you have a different type of one, like this one, let me see if I can pull it a little more. <coughs> Whoop, nope. Yep, everything's reversed. Nope. <laughs> How about something like that? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. So this one has another pin. So we still have the ground, and we still have the voltage, and this one's going to be 5 volts. We still have a data in, and then we have another pin, and that one's for clock. Okay. Now, these are going to be much more controllable, and they're going to be way more advanced, right? Because you not only have to control the data, but you have to control the timing of it. Okay. Arduinos can do this, too. But we're not going to really cover it because it's kind of annoying. So almost everything that I deal with is three, right? So I mainly use these, right? The three pin ones. And if you look online, they're also called NeoPixels. So in case you see those terms, OK? All right, <clears throat> if it focuses. Nope, yep. Now, NeoPixels come in different varieties, too. So the most common is going to be the strip, right? But they do come in other predetermined ways. For example, you can actually get them in rings as well. So if you're going to make like something that you know is going to be a ring, you can actually get these, 
or they sell individual pixels, which is one light, and you can buy those, okay? So there's kind of, yeah. Yes, so they come very small, and they go up to, I think, the size of like this, so it's like 12 inches, so it's kind of neat. And if you put them all together, you can have like a pulsating thing, so it's one giant solid thing that kind of goes for. It's neat, right? Now, <clears throat> these have the same principle as the LED strips. So they all run on three things. And of course, I got the one that I messed up, so let's do this one, which is also messed up. <laughs> They're very hard to solder, so I'll pre-warn you now. All right. <clears throat> Um, I want to say, babe, will you look that up? I want to say it's like nine, maybe nine bucks. LED circle. All right. So this one is going to have the four, but this one has the three. Okay. Now, on the back of these, you'll find the different pads, which are the same pads as the strips. Okay. So you still have the voltage in. You have the ground, which is going to be that negative one, right? So the voltage in is the positive one, then at one. And then you have two data ports here. And this is where this gets a little weird, OK? One says DI, and the other one says DO. Data in, data out, OK? Now, the reason that that's important is you can chain them together, all right? But you got to make sure that the data coming in from the Arduino or the controller, right? And then when you go out to the next one, so then it goes out and then you have to connect it to the in part of that one. How much was it? Ah, five to 10 bucks. Yes, right. So the cool thing is <clears throat> that when you have them in the strip, this is actually automatically built into it, if it actually does. So we only have one data port. This is the worst camera I've ever seen. All right, so it's actually uh, right here where you can see the split of it. Right? Anywhere you see these copper pads, you're actually allowed to chop or cut those as well. Yep, but you have to cut it directly in half. Now, in all the LED strips, you'll see the lines where it actually allows you to cut. It froze again. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. <clears throat> Boop. Here we go. All right. So anywhere you see those little lines, you can cut on them. OK? The important thing about this one is that there's also arrows here. Um, you know what's going to be better? Give me one second. So I have little LED strips, and I'll just pass them out so everybody can have their own so they can see kind of what we're dealing with. All right, there we go. Oh, they're also very flexible and durable. So that's nice. All right. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. All right. Yeah. So anywhere there's a line, you can actually cut. Now, there are different... Another variety of the NeoPixels is the number of LEDs per strip, okay? So you'll see that some are very spaced out and some are very close together. So it depends upon your overall effect. So I think this one is 30, I think, per meter. So basically it's how many LEDs fit, right? But the other ones come very closely packed together, which I don't think I brought one of those. I did not. But basically it's the number of pixels. So that kind of stuff. Now, they do have the rings, which uh, he looked up, and they said they were 5 to 10 bucks. So like one of these like already pre-done rings. Okay? They do have some of them that come with the wires already attached, because soldering them is a biatch. Because right? you can see on the back of this one, I have scorched it many times, because it's horrible. Right? Another way of getting around it is to make a clip for it. So you can actually do like alligator clips for a temporary solution, but for more of a permanent solution, it really won't work. Um, the other thing I've tried before, which I've had very success with, is to try drilling a little tiny holes through it and just kind of wrapping wires through it. It sort of works. <laughs> now, they also do make grids as well. So you have strips, right, rings, and this is an example of a grid. All right. So a grid is basically the same thing as a strip, but instead, what it does is it puts a lot of strips together on one solid piece. And it looks something like that. So each one of these little white squares is going to be one LED, so a light emitting diode. And each one of those can actually change to any color that it needs to, which is kind of neat. So how it does it is you change the R, G, and B levels, and then it will actually change the color that you get. So it's kind of like color mixing for anything else, right? Now how they work 
is we can't really see very closely, but what happens is there is a red LED, a blue LED, and a green LED inside each one of those. And by changing how, uh, what percentage is on and off, you can actually get the different colors. So that's kind of the cool part behind it, okay? So <coughs> there is um, other ways of doing things. So this is an example of a grid, but I bought it from Blinky Labs. Now, Blinky Labs is super interesting because they have their own controller built into it, so on the back of it, so it's kind of neat. So all you have to do is hook to a battery source, and you have a fully working grid, and Blinky Labs in general actually supplies um, web apps where you can actually animate things, so it's kind of like cartoons almost. So you can make it flash and do a bunch of different stuff like that, so it's kind of neat. All right, so that is an example of that one. Let me actually try to power something up really fast. You know what I didn't remember to bring? Oh, you know what I did? Give me one second. I need my, one of my battery packs. I'm just gonna pick this one. All right. <clears throat> now, the cool thing about any one of these controllers <clears throat> is there's a lots of different ways to power them, right? But generally speaking, they almost all take three, I think 3.3 volts. Okay, now the cool thing about that one is, is most cell phone chargers, like that you buy, are 3.3 volts. So they're actually designed to run off something like this. So all you need to do is plug in a micro USB to it and it will automatically power it up. So that's kind of neat. So let me see if I can get this one to turn on, but I'm having trouble with this one because I keep playing with it. And, of course not. You only have to be concerned about how long it's going to last you. That's the main thing about it, right? Because <clears throat> uh, different voltages and different amperages and all that kind of stuff. This one I broke and I forgot to fix. Blink, blink in labs. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. <clears throat> um, this one I broke and I forgot to fix. But I'll show you an example of the other one coming up in a minute. But basically all you do is you power it up and then it kind of stores the information on the little control in the back. All right. Things I should remember for next time. Fix this. <laughs> all right. So we have the LEDs. We have the NeoPixels. What do we do with them? Right? <clears throat> so there is different, varies degrees of solutions and how to actually make them work. The easiest thing you could do is to not bother programming it, which is kind of nice. So the thing about that one is <clears throat> there's a lot of different stuff that already exists specifically for this purpose. So I'll show you one of the examples, maybe. And the nice thing about these things is they already exist. You just have to power them up, and they're controlled by the different remote controls that come with them. It's frozen again. Jeez. I don't know what's going on. All right. <clears throat> you have to keep touching it. I wonder if it's frozen for that thing. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So this is the remote control for this particular unit or a controller, right? And then this is the actual controller itself. Now, how it works is there is a tiny board inside of here that actually has the, everything pre-programmed on it for you. Okay. Now, all you have to do is you plug in your LED strip right here. Okay. Now, the question becomes, how do you actually plug this in? Because this doesn't make sense, right? So you need to get some kind of connectors for it. Now, this is where it gets a little fun and weird for lots of reasons, because there's a lot of different ways to connect your LEDs. So let me give you a couple of examples. Um, these are for people that do not like to solder. Okay, So these are those kind of solutions, because if you do like to solder and you're comfortable with that, the best solution is always to solder to it, okay? So the way you would solder to it is you would just put a little bit of flux on here on the different copper pads, and you do something called tinning them. So you basically take some solder and you put it on there first, okay? Then you do the same thing at the end of a blank wire. So you'd get like an end of a wire, you tin that. So you'd heat it up with a soldering iron, you put some solder on it, and then you stick the two of them together, you heat them both up, the solder will melt, and that becomes a permanent bond, okay? All right. <laughs> yeah, you don't want them to touch. So there is other solutions that if you don't want to solder, then they look something like this. So this is an example of an LED connector. There we go. And this one has three different prongs. OK? 
Okay? Now, how they work is you have to just make sure you have some of the casing pulled back. And by the way, not all LED strips have this plastic casing because um, it's generally there just to protect it, right? So you don't actually have to have it. <clears throat> now, you want to pull a little bit out or cut this away so it's just plastic so you can cut it. And then all you do, let me see if I can show that, is simply slip it in. <clears throat> And then you go underneath these little prongs, if I can do it. Eh. No. It's a little challenging, but it shouldn't be that bad. There we go. <clears throat> so what that does, and of course you couldn't see while I was doing it, looks exactly like that. So these have little metal tips that touch the copper pads. Okay. Now when you close it, it puts some pressure on it, which allows it to stay put. All right. Now these are good <clears throat> for a lot of different stuff. But just know that they are not permanent. I'm going to go with that. Not permanent. Completely good. But if you jostle it around a lot, like it's on your costume, it has the option of falling out. So be aware for that. Okay? So if you're going to wear it and stuff like that, soldering is probably your best option. So just by far. Okay? <clears throat> so this is one type. <clears throat> now there is other types of these, and they basically do the exact same thing as before. Okay? So this is another example. So instead of opening up, what this one does is it has a little gate right here. So you pull the gate open. And let me uh, empty this out real quick. Take this one off. Eh. All right. You'd slip it on in. Boop. Like that. And then you would push this black thing back down, and that will create that bond. Now, the better thing is these are much more secure. Right? So it's kind of neat. And what they do behind it is they have lots of different individual like feelers, and then they group them together. So then they make sure that the pads are touched. And then basically at the end, you just get some blank wires that you can do stuff with. Hook them to your projects, hook them to the batteries, hook them to your Arduino, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So these things are great, and they are very quick. Okay? All right. So that is how we start connecting our wires. So we either use one of these connector pieces, or we can do soldering. Now, once you get to that point, then, oh, you know, I should show you one more thing. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> nope. Um, LED strip connectors. I have lots of connectors here, but not up oh, there they are. <clears throat> now, when you connect things together, there are a lot of different connectors out there, so just kind of be on your lookout for those. But you'll see these very common. Okay? So they come in three and four prongs. Now, these are the female ones, so they have the holes. These are the male ones, because they have the little prongies. All right? Now, what you do <clears throat> is at the end, it's just normal cable, so normal wire. Right? So you have to make sure that these uh, get soldered together here. Okay? Now, for that, you'd have to solder both of them, put some things in between. But there are other solutions, too. So if you don't like to solder, they sell these, which are kind of neat. So these work on a very different principle. And I'll show you one of the bigger ones, because it's easier to see. Okay? Now, these have heat shrink tubing. Do you guys know what that is? So heat shrink is like it starts as a bigger tube. You apply like heat from a heat gun or like a hair dryer, but on high, something like that. It has to be really hot. And then it shrinks. So it's kind of like a shrinky dink. Right? Do you have a question? Ah. Yeah. Right? So these come in different sizes, of course. So for these wires, you would use the smaller version, like that. Right? But the basic premise is they have this metal ring here in the center. Okay? So you'd put the wires in, one from each side, and then you would take a pair of pliers and you would just smush it together, and that holds the bond. So it connects the two wires. Then you would apply heat, and then it would heat shrink to the two sides of the wire, and then it becomes a permanent bond. And it's actually really easy and very effective. So it's kind of nutty, right? These are called heat shrink. I want to go with no solder connectors. I can look at my Amazon cart. <laughs> They're on Amazon. But yeah, see if they pop up. You know? You're not looking. Okay. So it's one of those, right? But they come in usually a box of different sizes. So it's something like that. So then lots of different wires, right? Just make sure you're using the right size for the right wire. Because if it is too big, right, and you try to put a wire in it, like right, this, then it's just not going to be able to shrink enough to actually secure the wire because there is so much of a gap, 
right? So if you're going to use something this size, then you would use something like along that size of thing. So you want it to make sure that it's almost tight in there, but you still have a little bit of wiggle room. So something kind of like that. Okay. All right. So those are the no solder ones solutions. What is it? I was close, right? <laughs> they're, they're, they're like all titled. Heat shrink, waterproof, wire connectors. There you go. Link at the bottom of the YouTube. Ta-da. I don't yes. know. <laughs> uh, sure. Click here. No. Ding, ding, ding. All right. <clears throat> so all of this, and we've yet to program anything, right? <laughs> These are the basics of the NeoPixel. How do you connect them to something else? But we haven't actually connected anything, right? All right. <clears throat> so once you get them to something like this coming off of it, then you can start connecting it to controllers that pre-exist. Okay? So they just kind of fit together, boop, and they slide on into the different pins, and that connect completes the connection. Okay? <clears throat> now, this is an example of a four-prong one, but they do have three-prong ones as well. So there's a couple different things. Right? Now, once it's connected to this, all you would have to do is power it up via the little port right there. Right? Usually you usually can run it with a 9 volt, kind of runs on that kind of stuff. So you can find little 9 volt connectors like that right about here-ish. Right? So these are most electronic stores as well. Right? They're usually pretty cheap. This one is 50 cents. Ooh. Right? But you just need to make sure that the tube is the right size to actually fit inside of what you're doing <clears throat> snugly. Because there's a couple different size tubes, and there's no good way to actually explain which one fits on what. So just make sure that you have the proper two of them, right? Because usually it'll say what size it is, and you have to make sure you got the matching size. Okay? So after you power it up like that, then what happens is now it's able to start doing things, and then you would actually control it by this remote control. <clears throat> now, this remote control is one of the easier ones. So it's kind of like a more advanced version of what I showed you before, the thing from uh, Lowe's, right? It allows you to change to any color listed here. You can actually control the brightness. You can uh, turn on and off the actual things. And you can actually can make your own if you wanted to control this, because you can actually program it, which is kind of cool, and then have all those down here. They also have the auto flash and auto chasing and that kind of stuff, or just normal fading. Now, these are cool. But again, we're not really doing it, so they sometimes work for what you're doing, and sometimes they're not going to be good for what you're doing. Okay? If you want more control, then you have to go something a little bit more complex. So let's take a look at this next one. Now, this is actually one of my favorite boards. <clears throat> All right. Boop. Now, this is going to be a control board, right? And it's the name of this one is SP105E, because you know, that just rolls off the tongue, right? But that's literally what it's called. And it's neat because it actually has Bluetooth automatically built in to this thing itself. So what that means is you can actually control it directly from your phone. So that's kind of a, that, that looks like right there. Okay, this is the Bluetooth chip. Now, these over here are the tiny, thank you tiny computers that actually can do it. So these are going to be the controllers. Okay? On the one side, you have spots to either connect a battery, like I just put a 9 volt on this one. right? So I just kind of, uh, these are, by the way, kind of cool too, because they are no solder, because they are screw down posts. So there's a screw on the top, and all it does is it basically puts a little like metal box down for you. You put the wire in, and then you twist it the other way, and it sucks it back up. So you're kind of like, it's a friction thing between the two different metal plates. So it's a complete connection, okay? You also have the option of powering it with an adapter kind of like the one I showed you before for the 9 volts. So that can actually plug right in here into the barrel one, okay? So two different ways to power it. If you want to power it right then and there, something like this, or you can power it something like that. The other side of it <coughs> has the different posts. Now these are where you connect your LEDs. Now, the cool thing about this particular board, and you can kind of see, like, that's the name of it, the SP1. We're going to have to this whole video. <laughs> Just, like, mirror flip it, right? So SP105 is it actually controls the three LE pixels, the three little uh, copper pads, or the four copper pads. So it actually does both. Okay? The thing that you have to remember is that which ones you're going to plug it into. If you're going to skip one, you have to skip the second one from the top. And the reason you would know that is it is the voltage kind of set on this side of things, and this one is going to be the ground. And how it always goes is the same way on your pixel strip. 
So if it's uh, listed on your pixel strip, it's listed on here too. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what happens when you actually connect it? Okay. So this is where I connect to the LEDs. So to show you an example, I'm going to show you something that I built. And this is an example of a scare canister from Monsters, Inc. So was anybody, was there anybody at the, um, yeah, you were there? OK. You didn't let me finish. You're like, yes, I was there. <clears throat> I'm fine with that. So uh, for the full sale costume uh, cosplay thing, yeah, I hosted that as Sully. So we were Monsters, Inc. So I made a screen canister, right? And this started its life as a culinary, uh, no, wait, what is it called? What's it? Cuisinart canister that I got at um, Goodwill, right? I found it in Indiana, and I loved it so much because I'm like, that is going to be a scare canister, and I bought it, right? So the only thing I did was this actually had a plastic window in it that you could see how much pasta was in it. So I was like, nope, popping that out. 3D printed the center piece in here. And then behind it, I'm going to try to show you guys in there. Uh, maybe you need a light for that. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> Ironic that I need a light. All right. It's got to be something like, uh, OK, down there at the bottom, it's one of those SP-105s. OK? Now, all I did is on this side of things is I put an LED strip that runs behind it. OK? Now, when I attach a 9 volt to it, you can see what happens. Right. And this is really good if you're like, don't really want to program, but you still want some custom animations. SP-105 is totally the way to go. But make sure that you're building something you can actually get your hands inside of, because this thing is very tight. All right. <clears throat> ah, they can't really see it on the screen. But it's going green and red, right? So I'll show you guys more than that. Yeah, OK. Now, this is one of its default things. But what you can do is make sure you have your Bluetooth on. And then you can download the app for it. And the app for it is called Magic LED. Magic LED. And when you get the board, it actually comes with the instructions too, right? Um, but what you should do is, all right, so I pull up the app on my phone. Boop. All right. Now, when you t um, actually start it, it starts scanning for Bluetooth signals. And what you want to find is that SP-105. Okay? So I click on that. And now it automatically comes up with a full app for it. Now, what's cool about it is right now it's going red to green, but you can't really see it, right? Now, it has all of these different modes that you can actually apply directly to it without doing any programming, right? So say I just wanted to do uh, red, and it automatically changes to red. Cool, but let's see what else I can do, right? You can scroll down, and there are tons of different automatically preset modes for it, which is kind of neat, OK? You can also change the speed and the brightness of everything just by moving the little sliders in the app. So this gives you almost complete control over what this does, up to the point where I think it has, I want to say, like 90 modes. Let me scroll on down. You can kind of see, right? But each one of these is its own animation. So there's at least 96. Oh, there's actually 200 modes, which is kind of fun, right? But each one does something different. So if you have the time, cycle through, and you can actually pick your custom animation. Now, the reason I use this one is because I had that red-green, which is what a scare canister would do, right? So that's why I'm like, this is perfect, and I don't have to code it. And it took me probably like 10 minutes just to cycle through all the modes to see what they did. That's pretty much about it, right? But you can just hit the side button, and you can scroll through the different modes and see how it changes over there. Right. Oh, you can actually see that one on this camera. That's nice, right? Just by clicking the little button, you can instantly change it. It also does have a color changer down here, so you can actually choose whatever color you'd want in, uh, I think it's 16 million different colors or something crazy like that. OK? So this is good, and it's also super cheap. Maybe look it up. How much is it? Ah, uh, phone is dead. All right. Do uh, <coughs> you want to look it up? SP-105. SP-105E. I want to say it's like $12. It's super cheap, and I don't know why I don't own more of them. It's like one of those things that I should get more, right? Um, and it's super easy to do it. So just 17 bucks. That's actually more expensive than I was thinking it was. But ah, uh, there you go. All right, so I know that my mode is 76, so now it's back to the red and green, right? So I just have to keep track of whatever mode I'm doing. But I can also control the speed and brightness of it. So if I wanted to take the brightness down, I can do that. Oops, maybe. Boop, boop, boop. So now it's less bright, more bright, faster. 
giving people epileptic seizures, right? Or slower, just by button clicks. So it's super duper easy. And one of the highly, like, I recommend this quite a lot, <laughs> okay? All right, questions about this before going to something more complex? Yeah. Yeah, this thing. Yep. 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 So all you do is, the only thing I did was use these screw posts right here. You just unscrew it, you put it in there, and however you want to connect it to the actual strip, that comes like one of these little connector pieces. Yeah, so like one of those. But then you would just really connect that to here, boop, and then you can plug any LED strip into it. There are lots of companies. Yeah. It's... It's been around for like a long time for what it is, but it's actually like super cool for what it is. So it's kind of like a weird, like I don't know why more people don't use it. Yeah, it's like that kind of stuff. But it's neat. And if you want a no program solution, no program solution. Da, da, da. Yeah. It actually comes in one. Um, it's a little plastic piece that I instantly throw away because I'm one of those people. <laughs> but uh, let me actually show you what it looks like because uh, I was going to scoot it over here. But yeah. Um, boop. When you buy them, whoops, that's not right. Let me shrink that down. Yeah. I know. I don't understand what it is, right? Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, SP105E. Boop. They all look like this. So they come like a little plastic box already done. Yeah. And then it gives you the screw plugs. So on the bottom side of the box, then you can actually have access to the screw plugs. So then if you notice on the sides, they have all the little openings for you. So like here's the battery connector ones. Like here's where you actually like screw in the LED strips and stuff like that. Yeah. You're like, no, what is this? Right. And um, on the case itself, it actually has the QR code for the app as well. So, yeah. So it's all kind of connected. It, it's super great for what it is. Like, I can't recommend it enough. All right. Um, other questions about this? But I always like to show how things work, which is why I take it apart. Because I'm like, I'm a curious cat, so I'm that kind of curious cat. Yeah. Ah, good question. Um, for the this one in particular, I'm actually not sure what the upper limit is, but I powered holes, like reels of them before. So like if I plugged into the end of this, this whole entire thing would light up. Um, when we start programming, we actually have to know how big the strip is. But the key thing about it is the more LEDs, the more batteries it takes. So you have to watch out for it because it goes really fast. So even this, just cycling through this animation, will drain the nine volt, I want to say in like four hours. But you get this for four hours, right? And then, that, like, all I did was to have more nine volts in the bottom of it, and I would just switch another one into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the other cool thing is, if you have multiple of these running at the same time. Uh, you'd have to know which one you're dealing with, which is kind of hard, because they're all going to pop up as SP-105. So you're like, I want this like arm to be blue, and I want this one to be red. You might have to like a little bit of a guessing game for it. Mm -hmm. The other cool thing is, once you take the battery off of it, and you plug it back in, whatever you programmed it last, it stays. So like this one, it automatically started when I powered it up as red and green going up and down, because that's the last thing I did with it. But if I made it something else, it would stick to that. So it's kind of neat. So you don't have to fiddle around with your phone at the club or actual at the con or something like that. Cool. Any more questions about SP105E? Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Let's do more nerdy things. So the next level of stuff is to make your own uh, actual controller. All right. <clears throat> now there are a ton of things, but they are all under fall under the same umbrella of Arduino's. Have you guys ever heard of them? Arduinos. All right. So Arduinos are tiny little circuits 
boards that look kind of like that. This is my brand new one that I got that I'm super excited about because it comes with Bluetooth. And it's so small, right? But they range in size by a lot, right? So this is one of the most popular, and it is the Arduino Uno. It is super powerful and way overpowered for anything that we're going to need. <laughs> Point blank, right? Uh, but this is usually the standard one that you would find, okay? The other size is, <clears throat> is like this is a Arduino Nano. And this is the new one, so it just came out and looks something like that, right? Um, how can I compare it to something? There's nothing up here that has a standard size. Maybe that 9 volt, which I just threw away. All right, give me one second. Let me, uh... So, like, just so you can kind of see comparison size, like that's a 9 volt battery. And that's the size of it. Now, what this does is each little Arduino has a chip that allows you to program it any way that you want to. Okay? And every single Arduino has little pins coming out of it. Now, they're probably easier to see on the bigger board, which is why I brought that one too. And an Arduino actually has these channels right here, right? And each one of those can ex um, take in a wire. Now, when you buy the boards, you don't have to get these little channels on the sides. And instead, you can actually just solder directly to it. Okay? But when you're starting out, it's nice to have little jumper wires that just fit inside of the little ports, which allows you to access that pin, it's called. Okay? Now, each one of these is going to be an individual pin, and they're all going to be labeled. So you can kind of see a little bit right there. Right? Each one has a different number next to it, or a voltage, or a ground. Okay? Voltage. So voltage is the positive value. It's kind of like the battery. Okay, so for that one, you're going to have to find the one that says a voltage in. So each little Arduino, and if you can't see it, you have to look it on the board itself. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Hold on a minute. I'm going to pull it up here so we can actually see a better view of it. Boop. Arduino, no. All right. So we'll do something kind of like that, all right? So each one of those is labeled, okay? So the voltage in is where you're going to be getting the power source in, right? But if you notice right above it, there is going to be a ground. So remember, ground is the black wire. It's the negative side of that battery. Uh, that has a 5 volt, and we have 3.3 volt, and then the rest are going to be other pins, okay? Now, the 3.3 volt, allows you to access 3 volts out of it. So it'll always put out a constant 3 volts. The one right below that will constantly put out a 5 volt. Okay. Now, does anybody remember what voltage the LED takes? What is it? It's 5 volts, right? So remember, there's 5 and 12 volts. So each one of the LED ne NeoPixels will say how much it needs, but you want to make sure that you get the 5 if you're going to be controlling it with an Arduino, because it does not have a 12 volt out. Okay, but most of them always have that five volts. Now, we have analog pins, which is gonna be those, and we have digital pins, which are the rest of these. Okay, so you can kind of see all these say digital, and then they just are numbered one, two, three, four, five, and however many they have. Okay, Arduino Unos have a lot of pins because it's a big board. All right, now, generally speaking, if you have a prop or something where you have extra space, you can totally put one of these inside of it. Perfect, right? But, for us, when we're doing costumes and things like that, generally one of the smaller ones is a better fit. So something maybe like a Nano, right? But you do have to make a case for this one because this one doesn't come with a case, right? So some way to protect it from your body moisture and things like that. Or you can use a couple different other ones. So like this is a slightly bigger one. So this is one is um, automatically comes with Wi-Fi built into it. It's an ESP, ooh, I want to say 203. Think. And then we have other ones, <clears throat> and these ones come from uh, Adafruit, which is a company online that is super fun to play with, and they make these, which are really interesting, okay? So this one is called a circuit playground. Now, a circuit playground is neat because it, at its core, it's an Arduino, but look on the outside. What do you think these are? NeoPixels. So what this actually is it is a combination of an LED ring inside of an Arduino, which is kind of cool. So if you're making something that's circular that you know you want to light up, consider using this because it's a one-stop shop, right? And also, 
this is a good place to start learning Arduino because Adafruit has a visual coder for it. So we'll kind of show you that in a minute too. Okay, remind me. Yeah, they're super fun. She's nice. All right, <clears throat> so this circuit playground, right, usually comes in a bag like that. This one is 20 bucks, ding, which ain't bad for literally processing power of a computer plus, I think it's uh, eight, one, two, three, four, five, ten NeoPixels on it, right? And it has a lot of other cooler stuff on it. Uh, this particular one actually has sensors, so like an accelerometer or a spin sensor. So think about it. If you are wearing this and every time you spin, you want your skirt to turn from blue to pink, you can do that with this, right? And the cool thing is that each one of these outside ones are pins. Now remember, pins control things, okay? And the cool thing about this is the shape of them. If you notice, it's a hole, okay? Now that's cool because then you can use like electric thread, so it has like a conductive thread. You can actually just tie it to it, run it through your costume to wherever you want it to go, and then you can hook it to LEDs. So not only do you have to use these pixels, you can actually hook entire strips up to it as well. And it's a really powerful thing for 20 bucks. It's crazy. And it has on and off buttons, which not all Arduinos have. They're just either powered or not powered, right? All right, so that is one. Now, they do make even smaller ones. This is also from Adafruit, because I love them. And this one is called a Gemma. Now, these are specifically made for wearables. So any kind of costume pieces, we consider a wearable. Right? So if we look at the size of this next to that 9 volt battery, boop, that kind of gives you an example of how big it is, right? Kind of next to the nano. Same things, right? But also, it comes with those through holes so you can actually solder directly to it, or you can put that electric conductive thread through it, right? So it's kind of neat, and it's super tiny, right? All right. That's about it. So the back side is always the battery port of that. And then the front side is your data port to connect it to your computer. Now, what you have to know is you don't always have to use a battery port. Mm -mm. Because what you can do is you can use any kind of uh, normal USB cable and a phone charger, and it will actually power your Arduinos. So, and it will power your LED strips that are also attached to those as well. So just by plugging it in, you can see it's actually starting it up. It has a little LED on it that's actually going to be doing it. And now it can run a whole entire LED strip with this little thing the size of a quarter. So it's kind of cool. So this one is a Gemma. All right. By Adafruit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I am. <clears throat> This one is a super powerful phone charger, but I love it because it is crazy good. Because this one um, it basically gives you 10,000 milliamps. I don't know if we're going to get into milliamps today because that's another complete total thing. But you have to figure out how much power you need it to do and how long it lasts is basically how many milliamps it is. So like the cheaper cell phone chargers from like five below and things like that, they still give you three volts out. Oh, like those. Thanks. So like something like that is good for small projects and for short things, but the milliampage of it, I'm going to guess is probably 2,000, maybe 2,200. Does this sound there? Ugh. All right, 800 milliamps. This is 10,000, right? So there is quite the difference between those. So what that means, it'll still give you that 3.3 volts because that's what's coming out of here, right? It's kind of a normal USB, but it'll only last for 10 times less. So instead of lasting for 10 hours, it'll last an hour. Something kind of like that. All right? OK. So that is the different types of Arduinos. But there are other reasons to use specific versions of Arduinos as well. So one of those things is they have extendable battery packs and extendable things, which allows you to add stuff to them fairly easily. So one of the things is. Adafruit also sells an Arduino Feather, which is just like an Arduino. Uh, the cool thing is they have a set and standard shape. And now what that means is they have other things that fit directly on top of it. So this is an LED grid, right? 
And then what it does is it automatically just pins into it. So basically these pins fit into here. And then for an example, my Arduino Uno, which uh, is probably right in front of my face, it is, it would just sit right on top of it, boop, right, and plug into it. Now, that's cool, because what this does is it automatically gives us an LED grid that is completely controllable by that Arduino, okay? Now, if you don't like Arduinos, you can actually go other routes as well, not to further confuse you, but to further confuse you. You can actually use tiny other computers like a Raspberry Pi. Right? Raspberry Pis are super powerful and they can actually run a whole entire computer by itself or be your server, right? So a Raspberry Pi looks something like this. Okay. It's like the size of a stick of gum, maybe a pack of gum, right? So put it next to the nine volt, which I don't know why I keep saying that, there it is. So it's about that size of things, right? The cool thing is it comes with a crazy ton of ports on here, right? And then each one of those can uh, be powered by it, and you can actually power other things off of it. And then it comes with these pins, which are the same type of pins as an Arduino. All right? The other cool thing is that a lot of people love Raspberry Pis, so they also have things that fit directly on it. So like these are called hats. Uh, that's their terminology for it. So this one's actually called the unicorn hat for it, which I love it, but it's fun. All right. So all it is is just like that feather that I showed you, except it is the size of that Raspberry Pi. So it would just fit right on top of it. It's all kind of all hidden in one little package, and then that controller would control these LEDs. Okay? These are LEDs. Like NeoPixels. Woo! Unicorn hat. That's why it's all the same size, right? So there's a lot of different solutions, and honestly, there's not one that's going to be a catch-all for what you're trying to do. So it depends upon what you're trying to do and what your ultimate goal is, right? When you're first starting out, go the easiest way possible, right? Easiest thing you can do. Try, like, a standard set of LEDs, or maybe try one of those, like, uh, like real control things, or if you want to get crazy, you can try other things. Like, we have this one, right? So this is kind of like you would find at Walmart, right? So Walmart sells these LED strips that plug into the back of your TV that just kind of go around it. They're actually fantastic. So like you'd be surprised how good they are because they have a little controller, right? They still are powered by a USB plug, right? Which means you can take any normal phone charger, plug it in, and you now have a completely portable like LED light for $5, because that's how much they cost at Walmart. You know what I mean? So I'm like, oh, okay. And I've used a couple of those. Uh, has anybody seen the anime Black Clover? Yeah, okay, good. So we were Uno and Asta. And so, but the thing about it is we wanted it to be more unique. So we actually had a book that would float in front of me and then it lit up. So I carved the book out and I put LED lights in it and we made a little uh, smoke machine out of like um, a cigarette vapor. They have a lot of tutorials online, but uh, Ka Kamui cosplay. Yeah, she just did a really good one that kind of uh, was really, it really well, so I'm not gonna try to get into that. But they have one of those that you put like a little aquarium pump on it. And so we had a book that floated in front of me and then it lit up and smoked. So it was kind of fun. But the LED strips in it were literally the $5 ones from Walmart because they didn't need anything other for it to do than just pulse, right? Um, before we go any farther as well, they do have LED lights that are much simpler, okay? And what you mean by that is not all LED strips are gonna be NeoPixels, okay? They do sell LED strips that look like this. Now what these are is they are not controllables, right? And they have just normal LEDs on them. So it's kind of like that basic LED that I hooked a battery to. Now the cool thing about this is they usually automatically always come with an end already on it. And all it really does is light up or not light up. That's pretty much about it. So, uh, and, uh, that's pretty much about it. Now, why would you use these? Anywhere that you want light that you don't want it to be animated, okay? So that's just kind of the normal kind of sticky one. I use it sometimes for like, um, what did I use this one for? I used it for Wonder Woman's whip. So I made a light up, uh, loose, uh, what do you call it, lasso of truth. Right, so I put these all in it because I just wanted it to glow. I didn't really want it to be a certain color. So they actually sell these as well. 
Okay? Anything that's not going to be animated, you can totally get away with this. And these are so much cheaper that it's ridiculous. Yeah. So those are non-controllable. All right. <clears throat> um, it's still an LED strip, but that's not controllable. So you wouldn't put a NeoPixel or something like that. This one is? Oh. No, that's not it. Um, it's over there, but it's fine. <clears throat> the other thing that's kind of neat is I am a scavenger, so I have pre-warned you about this, right? Yeah, question. Oh, yeah. Yep. Most of the LEDs that come like this automatically come with a sticky back. So it kind of like comes with that 3M sticky stuff on it. It's not that sticky. <laughs> like, it seems like a really good idea, but it's not. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to use a really wide zigzag stitch if your actual machine can do it over it, or you'd have to make a pocket for it. That's kind of the two ways of doing it. Other things you could do is just tack little pieces. So maybe just do like a little whip stitch across it and whip stitch across it, wherever you want it to be. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I like the pocket method myself um, because then it provides a little bit of um, diffusion for it, so it's not just a solid LED strip, and you're like, LED strip! So it's nice to have something kind of like a little bit different. Yeah. Absolutely. Any white fabric actually works great. So, like, it's quite nice. All right. <clears throat> so, let me explain these things. So, this thing is a little Arduino. Right. It's a little controller here with a battery pack, and it is a micro battery pack. So it's a LiPo battery pack, and I'll explain those in a minute too. Uh, and it comes with a button and a little switch. Now, where I found these at is the weird thing, is because these are from Light Up Shoes, right? Does anybody ever see those where you plug your shoes in and you can actually just have glowing feet? That is totally what these are. It's actually the shape of a shoe. But I found them all at Goodwill, and they were a dollar a piece, and they were all left shoes. And I was like, Right. It had to be like some sort of display or something, but I was like, this is so weird, and no one is going to buy these, except for me, because I took them all home, and I tore out all the electronics of that, and now I have a whole entire bag of little things that are self-powered, a little button that actually cycles through the different things for it, and animates. And I'm like, uh, yes. So, if you get bored and you find some light-up shoes at Goodwill, take it apart. But that's actually how they're working is they have that little thing that right there that actually controls it and the battery packs in the back. Let's talk battery packs. All right. Batteries packs are always a weird thing when dealing with wearables because there's no really good solution for it. There's just not, right? The battery packs are always heavy, they're always big, and they always kind of suck, all right? A lot of this kind of stuff works well when you're just gonna use the phone chargers. So for me, I almost always prefer a phone charger, okay? For other solutions, what you have is you have LiPo battery packs. So they come like this, all right? They're available online. They're usually for like RC cars and things like that. Now, these are great because they put out a constant 3.7 volts, which is usually what an Arduino would likes to take in. It's anywhere between three and four volts, right? So it does that, and they are gigantic. So this thing is 5,000 milliamps, all right? So it basically, it's half of this, but in a solid state. Now, it's cool because it has two like, uh, wires coming out of it, a positive one, red, and a negative one, black. So you can pu put this directly into any kind of power source, or you can plug it directly into the battery pack of that. So that's how to one way to different, uh, a different way to actually connect it. So it looks something kind of like that. I connected to the end of it, which is just a jumper, and it fits right in. Right there. So kind of like that. Okay? So this is a different way to do it. Now, the problem with LiPo battery packs is they're a little bit volatile, all right? Now what that means is, is if you leave them in heat, they will expand and explode. Not good. If you charge them wrong, they will also expand and explode. There's a lot of different ways to be careful when using LiPo battery packs. Because how do you recharge it is probably the weirdest thing that you have to do. In order to recharge a LiPo battery pack, you actually have to have a special charger for it. And so this is an example of one sold by Adafruit as well. Now what it does is you plug it in there and you can just power it with the USB port. And what it does is it senses the level of battery power that it has and it only fills it up to the maximum amount and then it shuts off. That's super important, 
all right? So when you're charging it, you definitely have to have something that's designed to charge it. Super important, okay? All right, the other way of doing things <clears throat> is to use other types of LiPo batteries, because there are other different types. So for example, oh, you know what, I want to show you these. The RC remote control card, like a whole entire thing, gives you a lot of good battery types as well. So all of these are different batteries. You have to make sure that they all give you that 3.3 to 3.7 volts. So you gotta make sure that that voltage is correct. And then the only other difference is the milliamps. So for example, this one is 2000 milliamps, right? Where remember this is 10, this is 2000, right? And these little ones are about 900 milliamps by itself. So it's like how much it can power it for how long, all right? Now, the good thing about these is they normally come with their own chargers. Okay, and they're not super expensive. The other choice of doing things, and this one I like, but it's a little bit harder to work with, so I'll kind of pre-warn you, are this type of a battery, okay? So it looks almost like a really big AA kind of thing, right? But what these are is they're 18650s, that's the battery size. So like that is a AA, this is an 18650. Um, just to show you the size and difference, that is a AA battery, and that is a 18650, right? Now, the interesting thing about this is this little AA battery is 1.5 volts, right? Where this spits out 3.7 volts, and just this one thing is 3,000 milliamps. Crazy big, right? Now, what you would do with it is you would then have to incorporate this into your outfit. Okay. They also sell battery containers, which I did not bring, but I'll show you an example. Actually, this is it. <laughs> I love it when it works out. All right. So they sell stuff like this, <clears throat> right? Uh, I think it was, I want to say four bucks maybe. And basically the only premise is this one actually holds two of these and it holds them secure, right? And then it gives you your red and black wires coming out of it. So then if you put them in here, what it does is it makes it parallel. So then, uh, not parallel, series. So then you actually get six volts out of it instead of the 3.3, .3, okay? All right, so something like that, which is a nice solution and it's interchangeable, which is the reason I like these because I can carry extra ones of these in my pocket and then switch it out where you can't really switch these out very easily because they're gonna be like in your costume, right? These, it's an 18650. They also sell a smaller, shorter one, which I want to say is 12,650, but it's about half the milliamps as well. <clears throat> All right, everybody following me or are you going too nerdy? What part are we, what are we feeling so far? I can make lights. Programming. <laughs> True, but we're gonna show you at least the simple way of programming the Arduinos because I don't want to leave you in the lurch for that. All right. I cannot get this back out of there. <laughs> All right, come here. Oh, the other way, by the way, I wanted to show you how to charge them. So, yeah, you take that. Yeah. <clears throat> so this one actually comes with like a charger for it by itself. So it came as a two pack. So it came with two of these and this, and I think it was like 14 bucks. And it's nice because it's a built-in charger that you just put right into the wall. So if you want to power it, just get a couple more of these, have them charged, and your costume can last for hours. It's kind of the cool thing about it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's the other good thing about it. Now, if you get super fancy, <clears throat> you can start making your own boards, something like this. So this is a custom circuit board that I made, which actually contains the Arduino. Boop. It's a blue, blue beetle, it's called, blue no beetle. From, uh, I wanna say digi robot? But then the battery pack is here, so it just has the little battery prongs where the battery just fits right into it. So it's kinda cool. All right, so it's something kind of like that. But this is, again, way too complex for what we're doing. But it kind of gives you an idea of what you can do. All right, um, questions next? Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do have social media. Uh, it's Dan is creative, so it's spelled D-A-N-I-S-C-R-E, the number eight, T-V-E. Dan is creative. What? Instagram. Actually, literally everything in my life is that. 
<laughs> You'll find my car in the parking lot. The license plate is also that, so it's nice. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, just message me. Like, uh, my name is Dan Williams on any full sale account as well. So uh, I sit over in 4D. So if you guys have questions, I love talking about this kind of stuff. So, oh yeah, D A Williams. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a couple other D Williams. So if you're messaging me, emailing me, it's D A Williams. But yes. For now, we're eventually getting our EDUs. Eventually. But yes. All right, let me clean up a little bit. Actually, let me, we'll take another break. You know what I mean? Then we'll start the coding portion of it. And I promise it will be painless as possible because we'll try to make it simple. Okay?